All right, guys, what's going on? I've got a nice little uh, package here from R&D. Check it out. Just turned up now. So we're gonna open her up and see what's inside. A little fuel line connection. Lovely little R&D uh, business card. <laughs> Stickers, it's always a bonus. No, it's just an invoice, okay. Okay, so that's the it's the inline fuel filter. Fair enough. Got must be like a mounting bracket. Some fasteners, Allen head bolts. There's some um, P clips and fitting adapters, AN lines, and the fuel pump. It's the ASNU. So we'll look at it. Sticker. Installation instructions. Yep, okay. Gives you the liters per hour versus um, fuel pressure. Man, the pump's tiny. Jeez, that is small. That's the size of the fuel pump. That is really small. Man. Oh, it'll be interesting to see what it's like. Oh, well, cool. So yeah, that's the full kit. I just need to find out what the basic instructions are and we'll go from there. So just having a quick look over the kit and checking the pictures of the installation. It looks like they've sent me uh, these P-clips which are too small because these are supposed to go around the pump and mount it against the firewall but clearly if you look so yeah they've, they must have thrown in some obviously two smaller clips but I should still be able to get the installation and done touch wood as long as, as, long as the fittings and that are correct I'll just uh, just crack on with it got a few tools screwdrivers and the uh, Needle nose pliers, hammer. Let's go get the pump out. Okay. Get the shit out. So now we're gonna pull the seat. Just a couple of things. You pull there and release the tab. One on each side. Seat out of the way, I'll take it out of the car. Let's pull the carpets back a bit. See to remove the um the access panel. These are they're quite hard. Especially when it's cold. No chance. This should pop out quite easy, but because it's 
it's got it's quite brittle. Come on. There we go. Jesus. Yeah, it's quite it's quite brittle. Got little arrows on there, so that's your supply to your fuel rail. That's the return back to the tank. I was off. Under your clip. I mean, there is there is special tools to undo these, but just use a small screwdriver, get away with it. Just pop your locks in. There's one on each side. Regular like that. Just be careful because it'll be quite brittle as well. Come on, you beast. Uh, before I fully, before I even take that off, I should have made sure there's no pressure on the fuel line or fuel system anyway. So I'll go and do that now. Fuel rail. I actually forgot I just started the car too. I'd started the car and moved it, so I need to release the pre- watch your eyes when you do this, because it'll... A little bit of pressure, not much. And carry on, taking this off. Should pop out. Come on. It's half out. She's tight, she hasn't been off for a while. There she goes. Whew. These things are solid. Same again on this side. It's half out, but it's tight the whole way. Shit. There we go, freaking hell. So blue's the, the pressure side going to the rail, and the black one's a return to the tank. They're all undone. Obviously you don't want to get try and keep them clean. Normally if you've got, you'd, you'd cap everything now, but I don't have any caps. Now we're just gonna take off the locking ring. There is a special tool for the locking ring removal, which pretty much only dealerships would have them, I'd say. Locking ring off. Let's see your locking ring is. Now you just block these off and just give it a bit of a. <laughs> just try to minimise stuff that you drop into the tank. Pump wiring and the sender unit wiring. Pump wiring is obviously the heavier gauge wire. Let's take that off. They're all kind of like crispy connections. Pretty old. There we go. It pays to do this with about less than half a tank, not three quarters full like I've got. Just got the fuel line off from the fuel pump. I just use the heat gun 
got it warmed up, popped it off now, not too bad. Now we're going to remove the line off the from the filter to the fuel rail because we're bypassing the fuel filter because we're running an inline one. So I'm going to do the same thing again. Use just the heat gun, warm it up and pop it off. Okay, so this is the standard filter. Just um, machined the housing and got the old filter out. And what can we see? It's definitely dirty. It's done about 70,000 miles, but anyway, don't need it anymore because we're running the inline one, so I'll carry on and modify that, cut that down there. And that's what the modified housing looks like, just remove the filter and just basically die grind out the side of it, and yeah, just rinse it all out, cleaned it. There's quite a lot of sediments in there. Oh, that's that's the old sediment and bits and pieces that was in the fuel. That's just what happens after years of use. So you just increase the volume of the swill pot, basically. And yeah, so now it's just uh, pump in and put the lines on. Sweet. Um, if you were just doing a fuel pump change, then basically you just do it in the car. You don't, you don't need to take the basket out. Obviously, I've taken it out of modified, etc., etc. That's your. That's the cap that you would remove if you're doing it in the car, in the tank. Just pull this cap off. It's sending unit back on, pump back together, and the return line just goes down to the bottom of the basket there. That's important that the return line goes in below the fuel level, otherwise you create bubbles and aeration, which can cause lean outs and cavitation and problems, which you don't want. But yeah, we'll go put it back into the car. That's the basket back in. To put the lid back on, and then basically just a reverse of what we've done to take it off. So yeah. Okay, so now we're just going to fit the adapter line and the inline fuel filter. So let's get to it. There's a fuel filter with the fittings on. And obviously it has an arrow for flow in on the left hand side and out that way. Let's take this, this line here off. Take that fitting there out, change it for the one they've supplied, and mount the little bracket. The bracket will go up here. I'll just use a couple of self tappers one, two, and yeah, it's freezing. Let's get to it. So, bracket mounted, just two self tappers. So that's basically how it's going to sit. Just needs the, the P clips that fit. It sits under there on that little bracket. And yeah, just needs all needs the lines tighten up now. Okay, so that's it. Just give it a quick start up. Just blend the air out of the rail. Check for leaks. Everything's dry. I'm just waiting for the for the P clips to come in, so we can properly secure it to the mount there. Other than that, yeah, it's all on. Everything's dry. Dry here and there's no leaks on in the inside either. So yeah, that's all done. Okay, cheers guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, see you next time.